Hey everybody, welcome to the uh, 90th anniversary of the wreck of the USS Shenandoah airship. <clears throat> yeah, that'd be today, 90 years ago today. So first off, we'll stop here in Ava, Ohio, uh, where the actual second monument was put up. Put there by the federal government because it was a, a bit easier for people to visit than the, the first monument which was erected near the crash site of the of the main cabin. There it is. Pretty much in the middle of a wee little town called Ava. A few nice big hunks of stone here, don't you think? The airship USS Shenandoah was the first American-built rigid airship. Although built in the United States, Shenandoah was actually based on the design of the German L-49, which was a World War I high-altitude bomber, which had been forced down intact in France in October 1917 and carefully studied. The L-49 was one of the height climbers designed by the Germans in late World War I when improvements in Allied fighter aircraft and anti-aircraft artillery made it necessary for the Zeppelins to climb to great altitudes to avoid being shot down. For the Zeppelins to rise to greater heights on a fixed volume of lifting gas, however, the weight and strength of their structures were dramatically reduced. This decrease in strength was accepted as a wartime necessity. Since a structurally weaker Zeppelin flying above the reach of an enemy aircraft and artillery was safer than a stronger Zeppelin that could be easily attacked. The copying of this design for an American airship, however, may later have tragic consequences. Construction of the American ZR-1 took place during 1922 and 1923. The parts were fabricated at the Naval Aircraft Factory in Philadelphia and in Akron, Ohio, and the ship was assembled at the Lakehurst Naval Air Station in New Jersey. The ZR-1 was a little over 680 feet long, had a diameter of right around 80 feet, and could carry up to 2,115,174 cubic feet of lifting gas in 20 gas cells. It was originally built to carry six Packard six-cylinder engines. <laughs> Five mounted in individual power cars attached to the hull and one mounted at the rear of the control gondola. But the sixth engine was removed in 1924. Now, like all previous Zeppelins, the GR-1 had been designed on the assumption that the ship would be operated using hydrogen. <laughs> but the fiery crash into the Humber River that the hydrogen inflated British R-38, which was scheduled to become the American Navy's ZR-2, convinced the Navy to operate the ship with helium, despite the high cost and very limited supply of gas. ZR-1 made its first flight on September 4th, 1923. It was the first ascent of a helium-inflated rigid airship in history. ZR-1 made a series of tests and demonstration flights in September and early October 1923, including an appearance at the National Air Races in St. Louis and flights over New York and Washington. And on October 10, 1923, the ship was christened USS Shenandoah, which is an Indian term that means Daughter of the Stars, and officially accepted as a commissioned vessel of the United States Navy. Shenandoah's first flights were on the job training for the American Navy, which had no previous experience operating any kind of rigid airship of its own. Now this is uh, site, crash site number two, uh, actually, but it's on uh, private property and it's posted uh, no trespassing. 
I know later today they're going to take a tour uh, through this area, but I can't go there right now. You can see down along that road. Uh, and if you look off uh, right in about the middle of the screen there, you might see a little traffic from uh, Interstate 77. Uh, crash site number two is right here, and right across the interstate is uh, crash site number one. But uh, we'll have to go the long way around to uh, get to it. Uh, don't you worry, though. I'm going to take you right around it. Shenandoah made one of its most impressive demonstrations in October of 1924 when the ship made a difficult 19-day journey across the United States from Lakehurst to San Diego and then traveled up the West Coast to Seattle and back to San Diego before returning to Lake Horse via Fort Worth. Shenandoah logged 235 flight hours on its headline-making journey across the country and captured the enthusiasm of both the American public and also leaders in the field of aviation all around the world. On September 3rd, 1925, on its 57th flight, Shenandoah was caught in a storm over Ohio. Updrafts caused the ship to rise rapidly at a rate eventually exceeding 1,000 feet per minute until the ship reached an altitude of over 6,000 feet. Shenandoah rose, fell, and was twisted by the storm, and finally torn apart, breaking in two at frame 125, approximately 220 feet from the bow. The aft section sank rapidly, breaking up further, with two of the engine cars breaking away and falling to the ground, killing their mechanics. The control car, which was attached to the bow section, also separated from the ship and crashed to the ground, killing the six men who were still aboard, including the ship's captain, Lieutenant Commander Lansdowne. Without the weight of the control car, the remaining bow section was seven men aboard, including navigator Charles Rosendahl, ascended rapidly. Under Rosendahl's leadership, the men in the bow valved helium from the cells and free ballooned the bow to a relatively gentle landing. In all, 14 members of the crew were killed in the crash. Now, this is crash site number one of the USS Shenandoah. This is where the control car fell and most of the lives were lost. This uh, little stone here was erected by the federal government. It was the, actually the first stone that went up. And this mowed off area here is where the control car fell. Some history. Uh, you find this at each one of the sites. Next. Uh, down the road 13 miles and, uh, and that was the shortest route I could take and uh, <clears throat> I noticed that the history said uh, 13 miles too so must be pretty close to 13 miles away where the bow section fell to the ground rather gently and uh, the survivors of the US is Shenandoah Right here, you're looking at it now. That was a fast ride, wasn't it? 13 miles. <clears throat> Crash site number three. So today is the day. 90 years passed to the day. Now we're almost at 100, aren't we? But I thought I'd bring y'all out here, honor these brave men. Flew in, flew in that ship, had no idea, had no idea what, what to do to start out with. Yeah, that took some serious guts now. <laughs> 